Hey guys, Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Noctua NHD15 Chromex. This is one of the leading air coolers on the market at the time of this video. This particular cooler sells for around $119 on Amazon. They do have a silver version of this also, but we're going to be looking at the black one in this video. I want to show you basically how to install this cooler. Now, this is a fairly large cooler, so be sure you measure up to make sure that this cooler will fit in your case before you order it. This cooler works with Intel LGA 1851, 1700, 1200, 1150, 1151, 1155, and 1156. It also supports all AM4 and AM5 sockets. So let's take a quick look at the hardware that comes with this cooler. Noctua was smart enough to break the uh, parts down here, the, these uh, hardware parts, into two separate sections, so AMD and Intel, so you don't get them confused and it's easy to match up with your instruction book. Here's the AMD side of things, simple, some spacers, some screws, and a couple of brackets. And then here's the Intel side, two. Then down here, we just have some fan splitters, a little screwdriver there, and some thermal paste. Good to go. Fan clips also. So let's see how this installs on our... This is going to be an AM5 motherboard we're going to be using here. Notice that on this board, we already have the memory installed. And we also... It comes complete with a built-in I.O. shield there and a shroud over that I.O. shield. Pay attention to that. We'll be talking about that in a minute. Now, the first thing we want to do is remove the stock mounting brackets that come with AMD motherboards. That just simply means removing these four screws and remove the two plastic brackets. We're going to keep the back plate, the existing back plate on this AMD board. And the cooler hardware mounts on that, which is pretty nice. So all we need to do is place these plastic spacers over the back plate screw holes here. They provide you with four of them. That's how many we need. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and get our AMD AM5 bracket here. And we'll put the screws that are designated for the AM5 socket through the proper holes for AM5. And we will place that bracket with the screws into the standoffs, the spacers here. And we'll go ahead and get them snug down. Notice how there are two more holes that you could have put these screws through. Those are designated for the AM4 socket. So be sure you're using the right configuration here for this to work properly. So we don't need to go super tight. Just, just nice and snug where it doesn't go anywhere. So we'll do the same thing for the other side of the socket. And please note that this these brackets do look different. So pay attention. You see the CPU where my finger's at. It says CPU and it's pointing upwards, so that's to help you orientate the brackets properly. There's also a stamp on there that says south, so that's the south or the bottom part of the socket, just so you don't get them confused. They make it pretty clear for you so you don't put anything on backwards. And we just snug those down nicely. We'll move on to the next step. Next, of course, is applying the thermal paste. Everybody's got their own method. This is how I do it. Please, whatever way you're comfortable with, feel free. We just want a nice thin coating of thermal paste, which is provided, by the way, by Noxua. I would recommend using their thermal paste since it's been tested with their product. But we get our thermal paste spread on here really nice and thin. Now it's time to just prepare our cooler to be mounted. So we got to remove the center fan by removing the clips and sliding the fan out. This will allow us access to this two screws that we would need to mount the heat sink to the plate. So that's all good to go. And of course, remove the plastic film that's on the bottom of this, on the surface of the heat sink. Of course, that's very important. Now we'll just set the cooler right on top of the processor, lining up the two screws with the threaded extensions they have there. Line them up just right, set it down nice and easy. You also want to pay attention to the fact that, uh, hey, the word Noctua is facing the right direction. You know, you don't want to mount it where those 
letters or those that word is upside down now we'll just simply tighten up these two screws onto their posts now we're going to just do a little at a time on each one just so we don't put too much pressure on one side of the socket we'll just go back and forth here and we're just going to get them nice and snug you don't have to over tighten once that's done we're going to place our fan back in place our middle fan be sure that it's facing the right direction and be sure that the cable that we're going to be using is on the correct side to where it's going to be easy for cable management and out of the way. We just set it down right into the middle there and we'll use our clips to clip it right around the heat sink fins. And once we have that done, we're ready to move on to the final step. Now this is a step that Noshua said is, is not necessary. And the reason why they say this is because these fans, if you have high profile memory, this outside fan here will sit up a little higher than what you might like. And that would, one, it would look funny. And secondly, it wouldn't give enough clearance for the side panel to go back on the case. So even if you try it on the other side of the heat sink, that shroud that I was talking about on the I.O. shield also makes the fan sit up higher, as you can see here. So and we, could do a, we could do a couple of things. You can mount a 120 millimeter fan that, so, so it wouldn't stick up as high, which might look a bit awkward, but you do have to have the right fan for that. Or you can simply do without it. Noxua says that uh, it will the performance of the heat sink will be just fine with just that middle fan. And as you'll see, as it turns out, uh, that is the case. It does perform quite well, even with one fan. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and use a 120 millimeter fan here. And as you can see, uh, it fits a lot better and it will provide a push-pull configuration um, but you know at the end of the day I tested without this fan and there wasn't that much of a difference in temperatures at all but it just depends on what you want to do and and your feelings of how it looks but we're going to go ahead and mount this as if we were mounting both fans and we're going to show you how to hook up the wiring here so hooking up with the cable is really simple Noxua provides you with a fan splitter this way, we can hook up both fans to one end of the splitter. And of course, the other end we hook into the CPU fan header. And, you know, pretty much that's it. With proper cable management, you can hide these wires nicely. And now we're ready to test this cooler to see what the temps are like. So we got the uh, system up here running on the bench. We're just going to take a quick look at the temperatures in the BIOS just to give you an idea of how well this cooler is doing a good job. This is on a Ryzen 5 7600X, which runs hot naturally. It's 34C in the BIOS, and I did test in the operating system. Temperatures stayed well within range under, under load. It performed quite well. This uh, Noxua is getting uh, a little um, old as of this video. It's been around for a good while, but it still performs very well. So anyways, I hope this helps somebody out. I'm Tim with Tim's Computer Repair. See you soon.